Good morning, this is Bernard Judge. Today is the 17th of June, 2010, and we are at the Chicago History Museum. Could you please state your name for the record? Wilson, Wilson Frost, F-R-O-S-T. Thank you very much. Have you ever done an oral history before? Quite a long time ago, not as of late. Do you remember who it was for? I don't remember. Okay. I did some for um, uh, history makers. Okay. All right. Fine. As a matter of fact, they still uh, uh, show it from time to time. Is that right? Yes. Very good. Um, you were elected uh, Alderman in 1967, uh, defeating a Republican by the name of Samuel Yes. Yaksik. I, I assume he was from Roseland? Yes, he was. Okay. And uh, at that time, you were at, it was the 21st Ward. That is correct. And you, among the candidates you beat was James Montgomery. James Montgomery and uh, Gus Savage. Gus Savage, yes. Both people who played a big role in this town, and uh, Jim Montgomery still is. That's correct. So he must have been a real young guy at that time. Yeah. Uh, uh, you served on the... Uh, uh, city Council for 19 years, and then w were you were elected to the uh, Board of Tax Appeals in uh, 1986 and served there for 12 years. That is correct. Okay. Uh, and you now live in Chicago and California. That is correct. All right. Um, so let's, uh, how did you, let's start with the, this this, we're dealing primarily with uh, Chicago politics and Mayor Richard J. Daley from 1955 to 1975. But thing, I mean 1976, Six. 76, but things spill over into later years. Um, how was it that you got into sh politics in Chicago? I lived in the 19th Ward originally, and in the redistricting, it became the 21st Ward. And in the 21st Ward, we formed a new democratic organization, which was part of the old 19th. And uh, I was a young attorney at that time, and uh, Joseph Robichaud was uh, appointed as the committeeman. And uh, I worked with him, and subsequently I was given an alternative I mean, an opportunity to run for alderman in 1967, in 66, and the election was in 67. 67. Did you meet with Mayor Daley before uh, the election? Or did, when did you meet, meet him first? I met with Mayor Daley before, and as a young practicing attorney, there were sometimes matters uh, coming up in the ward, and I represented the ward and protecting it against certain zoning matters and what have mm -hmm. you. So I did have occasion and had met the mayor, uh, but I was introduced to him as the automatic candidate of the 21st ward. And and who introduced you? Joseph Robichaud. Robichaud did. Okay. My yeah. committeeman. All right. So uh, you were elected in in uh, in sixty seven. Yes, in March of sixty seven, yeah. uh, we were in a runoff. Uh, Sam Yaksik and I were in a runoff. As a matter of fact, in the February election, Sam Yaksik uh, got more votes than all of us uh, other candidates, but he didn't have. Uh, uh, 50 plus, yes. so that he and I were in a runoff. And the ward was changing racially at that particular time. Correct. Um, so then you won. What, talk to, if, to me if you can about your relationship with the mayor uh, in the, 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 the following years. Well, in the following years, um, I was one of the young and new members in the city council. Uh, in the city council, we had some uh, more experienced, some older fellows, Ralph Metcalf, Claude Holman, uh, 
Harvey and Kenneth Camel. Well, these were the old uh, timers who had been in the city council for years, but then a new group of us came in. I came in with uh, Alderman Cousins, who's now uh, on the appellate court. I came in with Sammy Rayner. Those two were independents. I came in with Bill Shannon, uh, who's now deceased. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were the younger fellows in the city council. And uh, I was uh, in that group. I was the only one that uh, was uh, a lawyer, so that I had uh, additional uh, skills and benefits uh, mm -hmm. at my disposal. Okay. And uh, um, so how often did you meet with the mayor? Well, it wasn't a situation where we met on a daily or weekly yeah. or, or basis. When uh, legislation was pending in the city council that might impact our communities or issues involving our community, we would ask for an audience with him and talk with him. But primarily with reference to the city council, Tom Keene was the person who uh, ran uh, uh, the council and so that if it dealt with council and legislation we would usually uh, talk with Tom Keen because he was the chairman of finance and the floor leader. Okay, so um, do you remember uh, instances where you did meet with the mayor for one reason or just I mean uh, not necessarily in a group but I mean on your own because you were part of the administration. You, Sure, I would meet with him, uh, and there are many times I would have meetings in my community and hear the concerns of my constituents, and uh, if I thought that the administration was not uh, aware of it or uh, understood it, I would try to interpret and express my feelings about it. How did you feel he responded? There were in many instances he responded favorably. He gave me a lot of encouragement, but uh, I would be, be dishonest if I were to say that he agreed with me at all times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's true. Um, and and while you were considered uh, uh, part of the establishment, you, you did step out uh, in... Uh, 68 on Shoot to Kill and then yes. 69 on Hampton. Would you talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, these were things that uh, raised the, uh, shall we say, the level of concerns in our community where did I got a lot of people who came in and voiced their opinion and feelings about these things. And they uh, felt that the administration at times were not sensitive to the needs of their community. And as their spokesman, they wanted me to let the administration know this. And, uh, and uh, another instance was one when we had a school board member uh, who was not sensitive to the needs. At the time, many of the schools in the uh, black communities were overcrowded and uh, they put out these trailers, what they call Willis, Willis wagons. wagons. And uh, these were things that the community felt that children in our community were not getting the same educational opportunities as they were in other communities. Well, so you would go talk to him about these? Yes, I would. Would you? What would what would his response be? Well, he uh, uh, let me know that uh, he would take these things under consideration. In many instances, he would make arrangements for me to talk to some of the department heads or the heads of these uh, various agencies to it, so they could hear directly from me what my concerns were. And uh, uh, 
he uh, tried to address them. Now, when you were on the uh, city council, you had the op open occupancy ordinance came to up. Yes. Uh, and uh, Jim Murray was 18 at the time, the 18th? Yes. And could you talk about that? Well, the open occupancy ordinance, I had worked on that with the NAACP Legal Redress Committee even prior to coming to the council, so that I was familiar with the all of the legal activities that were going on. I, was, I knew about the consequences and the problems that it create, and I knew that uh, it was something that was unfair. And I figured that if Chicago is going to be a one Chicago, as Mayor Daley used to refer to it, I feel that all of its citizens should be treated the same. And, and he supported that? Yes, he did. He didn't support it initially, but... And then subsequently the courts came down with a decision supporting it. The Supreme Court did in Shelley versus Kramer. And then the mayor... And then uh, the city council, we adopted legislation uh, uh, indicating that Chicago uh, was on record as having an, an ordinance uh, which provided for op open occupancy. Right. So that vote was a fairly close vote. And I remember my, my Jim Murray, who was in 18, that, that was his... He, he was defeated as a result of his vote. Yeah, well... What happened uh, in the city council at that time, uh, a lot of the wards were heretofore that were primarily white wards who had become integrated. And in some of those wards, like the 18th and the 16th and some of those wards, their black populations had exceeded their white population, mm -hmm. and especially when it came to Democrats. Right, and um, I know I lived in the 8th Ward when Cousins became the alderman. Yeah, well, Cousins became the alderman at the same time that I did mm -hmm. in 1967. So um, did you meet personally with the mayor on the open occupancy issue? I didn't meet with him in a one-on-one. -on -one. I met with him with a group of... Uh, I think one or two other aldermen, and I think, uh, if my memory serves me correct, I think Bob Ming uh, was uh, sort of in that group. Uh, and they were a part of the then the NAACP Legal Redress Committee. I see. And uh, how would you characterize the, the mayor's... Uh response to, to this? I mean, was it something that he felt he had no choice on or something that he was proactive about? Well, the mayor was, in my opinion, a pretty shrewd politician. He uh, uh, would not telegraph his feelings and, uh, and wear them on his sleeve. But uh, if he felt that you had an issue that he felt that was in the best interest of Chicago, he would listen. Now, whether or not he would do something immediately or over a period of time was his uh, usually a decision. He would also make us aware of the fact that he had to generate the necessary support from the other uh, aldermen, and even though he ran a pretty tight reign on organization aldermen during those periods. There were certain issues that they would stray away in the, uh, the I mean, the, uh, the mayor would have to sort of talk with them in order to get them to accept the change of times.